You say you're in the market for a town, a special place to call your own. Christina Ruffini has just what you're looking for. If you're in the market for a white picket fence, several of them actually, Maine's Tuthill Village might be the perfect place to call home, or rather, homes. How many buildings are in this town? I guess there's 25 buildings or something like that. How do you not know how many buildings are in this town? Well, because it's just home. A lot of thought went into, it seems like, every inch of this place. Everything, everything. For Nathan Tuttle, home is this 40-acre compound that he acquired from his father, Kenneth, an antique dealer and the accidental founder of this federal-style foothold. There was no plan. It was preservation is what it was. He couldn't stand to see anything that was early, beautiful, be destroyed. That included a ramshackle 1800s home that a neighbor was about to burn down. Dollar for the house, but you have to move it. And he said, sure, what the hell? And once he'd moved one house onto his property, he was offered another, and another, and a village started to grow. We get a lot of pictures taken here, and you know, they just kind of wander around and look. We understand it. After raising his own family, managing tenants, and massive amounts of maintenance for more than a decade, Oh, wow. Nathan is ready to retire. You're the real estate agent for this place. I am. For all these places. I am, yes. Is he your most difficult client? He is 100% my most difficult client. I do my best. <laughs> Tuttle's real estate agent, Anna Boucher, who also happens to be his wife, is listing the property, which includes a church, a massive garage, and all the structures you see here for $5.5 million. Somebody can make this into whatever they need it to be. Yeah. But the only thing more difficult than owning a town might be trying to sell one. A fictional but strikingly similar real estate predicament was even at the center of the sitcom Schitt's Creek. You bought a small town in 1991, Johnny. Yes, I bought that as a joke for my son. Town-sized transactions can be serious business. My name is Brent, and we are here at the abandoned mining town of Cerro Gordo. Brent Underwood and his partners paid $1.4 million for a 380-acre ghost town about four hours north of Los Angeles. $4.3 million will get you this Rocky Mountain retreat three hours south of Denver. Or you can tip your toes into the market, or the lake, at this $1.4 million compound in upstate New York. But with great acreage, comes great responsibility. We paid about three million bucks for about 88 acres wow. of this wonderful landscape before us. Take the tiny outpost of Nipton, California, which spent almost a decade being sold, resold, and foreclosed on. That is until last year, when the circus came to town, literally. Why does a circus company want to buy a town? Well, we're an hour from Vegas, and it's, such a beautiful place. I'm from Australia, and it's full of gum trees, and I just love the gum trees. This is a shopping cart. And Ross Mollison is the impresario extraordinaire, and yes, that's his actual job title, of the live entertainment company Spiegel World. The vision is to use Nipton as a staff retreat and incubator to workshop new shows. Most of the great creation happens out of the workshop. They're here 24-7 and creating the whole time and having a lot of fun doing it. Eventually, Mullison wants to build a small, eco-friendly desert destination. That is, after they finish the less glamorous parts of ownership, like cleanup and infrastructure repair. Anybody who buys a town will probably tell you that it's 20 million bucks of investment that comes on top of the purchase so price. So it's not the sticker price. The sticker price is just the start. You're putting petrol in that baby forever. Until recently, Nipton's most frequent visitors were the clattering carriages of the Union Pacific Rail. Founded in 1905 as a mining camp, it grew to include a school and general store. And in the 1930s, golden era movie stars used to haunt its hotel. Rumor is, Clara Bow still does. Just like the song in Hotel California, I checked in and I can't leave. Jim Esslinger is one of Nipton's two dozen or so living residents. 
about once a month, we go into Vegas for groceries. That's the closest grocery store is Vegas? Yeah. That doesn't worry you at all living out here so far? Like, what if you have a heart attack? Like then I die. <laughs> I believe that the Mojave Desert has a spirit of its own. And it decides who gets to stay and who goes down the road. A town is not an easy acquisition and certainly not for the faint of heart. But just as Jim and the Mojave seem to have embraced Nipton's new, unconventional owners. Back in Maine, Nathan Tuttle has faith that the perfect buyer will find their way home, or in his case, homes. We don't find the right person. The right person will find us. You think so? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's just the way it works. 